Hello, I'm Elizabeth Luard. Welcome to Friuli, Italy's most northeasterly province, where the Alps reach down to the Adriatic. An ancient people hold this pass. Neither earthquake, nor invasion, nor the thunder of war has been able to make them loosen their grip. The Friulanos have a reputation for hard work and an independent spirit. They've needed it. This plateau, once the seabed, has been a battlefield since the beginning of history. The Romans drove a highway through to give their legionaries access to the conquered lands in the east and lived to regret their work when successive invaders marched right back down it. Attila and his Huns, the fierce Lombards, Turks, Hungarians, Napoleon's French, the stormtroopers of the Third Reich, all left their mark on the landscape and the people, but not on their language, still the ancient tongue of the Friulani. War disrupts the agricultural pattern. Soldiers empty peasant store cupboards, and the land does not get tilled and planted to refill them. The rootstock here is Celtic. The Celts were always pushed to the edges of Europe by the warrior nations who followed. Maize is the staple crop. This is polenta territory with not an olive grove or a forkful of spaghetti bolognese in sight. Maize from the New World filled the bellies of the Old World's poor. As the potato is to the northerner, so maize is and remains the ideal peasant crop for the southerner. Maize, or Indian corn, is tolerant and prolific, needing only one day's labour a week instead of the five a man needed to grow his wheat. Barnyard fowl get fat on it, domestic cattle thrive on it, and give back good manure for the fields. Maize can't be made into raised bread, so it goes into the porridge pot. A cup of maize will absorb three cups of water to make a thick porridge. You bring the water to the boil with salt, stir in the freshly milled polenta, in this household, it's the father who stirs the pot. The job needs strong muscles, a long spoon, and 45 minutes stamina. Up in the mountains of Carnia, star chef Gianni Cosetti serves up peasant polenta to his gourmet clientele. Frico, fried cheese, is the usual accompaniment to the winter dish of polenta. The cheese should be grated the day before, so it has a chance to dry out a little. Down on the plain, the grated cheese is deep fried in corn oil to make a crisp, lacy pancake. This is just hard cheese, matured in the store cupboard. No chance of fresh cheese until the spring milkings. The hard leftover rind was used in the old days. In the mountains, there was no oil for frittering, and the cheese produces its own oil. The chefs of Italy can claim to have taught the rest of Europe how to cook, first of all through the military might of Rome, and later through the gentler offices of marriage, when the Renaissance princesses made wives for the monarchs of Europe. Polenta is essentially bread tipped out onto a board to make a bread shape. The mountain maize is paler than the polenta from the plain. Otherwise, spot the difference. The polenta, say those who know, should never be touched with a knife. Or next year, the maize will grow no ear, so it's sliced with a thread, always from beneath. The string's right where the last cook left it. Convenient if you get hungry in the middle of the night. How's that for a fancy bit of bread and cheese? <laughs> 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 no, 
No, el fresco sí lo parece más diablo o más. ¿Qué te más? Sí. No, no, no. This is a sagra, a village celebration. Time to exchange news and views, and maybe take a turn round the floor. And the cooks are all volunteers, raising money to build a new church hall. And when you throw a party, of course you need a slab of polenta with your grilled chop. A meal without bread is not a meal at all. It's lovely made the day before and smacked on the grill when it's set, just like toast. Polenta goes with everything. The frico is crumbly and absolutely gorgeous. I could eat it forever. Spring is doubly welcome for the warmth of the sun and the new growth in the fields. Young spring shoots provide a much needed boost after winter shortages. There are plenty of edible shoots around, but the most prized of the Mediterranean's native wild greens is the asparagus. Ran Tavagnaco, the people say, asparagus has been cultivated for a thousand years. Carefully earthed up to keep the shoots fat and white. This is an old cash crop trekked over the snow-capped Alps to the markets of the Habsburg Empire in Vienna. The journey took less than a week and the tender shoots were kept fresh in the cold air of the mountains. Better still, asparagus can be rotated with maize. Ten years of cash crop, then ten years of staple grain. Maize-fed chickens produce good eggs. And Signora Bertoldi likes to serve her own asparagus with eggs. The asparagus is best cooked upright, so the tips are only steamed. It's ready when the tips are tender, 10 to 15 minutes. We're making the most popular local recipe, asparagus Bismarck, named for the Prussian Iron Chancellor, whose countrymen provided the market for this luxury. Sale e pepe, pepe senza miseria. Senza miseria. <laughs> Dicono gli asparagi. Mm -hmm. Just hard boiled eggs mashed up with oil, salt, and pepper to make a little sauce. As good hot as it is cold. Simple but delicious. Mmm. E buono. And at the nearby pottery in Buya, you can get a specially painted plate in case you need reminding of the recipe. You often find small industries which thrive on the coattails of the local cash crop. Glass bowers in olive oil country, potteries where there is honey to be potted. So why not plates for the asparagus? There's still good homemade produce to be found. The fine flavored salt cured hams of San Daniele. There are 15 prosciutto curas in this small hilltop town. A famous all over Italy and beyond. The hams come from the locally reared farmyard pigs, Animali di Cortile, which are the special care of the peasant housewife. The ham is coddled like a baby regularly massaged with the salt throughout the first three of the 14 months or so it takes to cure it. Round here there are laws to protect the purity of the air, which along with copious amounts of salt is all, absolutely all, that is used in the preserving process. Once they've taken the salt, the hams are moved around into the air and out of it, cellar or attic, windows open or closed, 
depending on the humidity, wind, temperature and the point the ham has reached in the curing process. The younger you learn to appreciate the finer things of life, the better. And the hams of San Daniele certainly ranks high among the finest things that can come the way of anyone, even a bus full of Italian schoolchildren. A masterpiece is a masterpiece. Last week was Michelangelo. Today it's prosciutto. Now we know what to do with those breadsticks. Why didn't anyone tell me before? No one ever gives you a Michelangelo to take home. With quality like this, quantity is worth fighting for. Even though it's spring, there's snow on the peaks and the cows are still in their winter quarters. May is for the cows, so they give good milk all year round. In the old days, everyone had a cow as part of the household furniture, and the young bull calves were milk fed for veal, the great party treat. Down at the dairy, it comes in fresh every morning in all shapes and sizes. Cheese making overcomes the problem of storing milk, a most important food source for the peasant farmer. This latteria makes butter and cheese for the local farmers, who got together to employ a cheese maker. It's run as a cooperative. Everyone gets back what he puts in. To simplify the process, the quantity delivered by each farmer each day is noted down. And when there is enough to make a batch of cheese, the day's production is made specifically for that person. The milk is warmed to start the lactic acids and rennet working, and then cooked and cut and drained. The farmers' wives help out on a rotor basis. Now the cheese goes into the press. The advantage of a cooperative is that you can afford modern machinery. This is not fancy stuff, but simple good nourishment for the family. It can be grated on the midday vegetable soup. It can be taken by the farm worker to the field, adding much needed protein to a diet long on vegetables and short on meat. It's stored and matured. Each cheese is stamped either with a name or a number so that everyone knows his own. There's also the butter to be churned, sold fresh daily from the door. The wages of the cheesemaker are paid from the surplus sold for cash. When you buy your cheese from the people who make it, they can offer good advice on how to choose and use it. I want some to make frico, so I need cheese which is at least four months old. Erbarelle, edible weeds, wild greens and spring leaves for salads, lamb's lettuce, the rosettes of young poppy, rugola, sclopit, it's a silene, and the seller grows or gathers them herself. Who better to set me right on what is what? E questo? Questo è cucinare. Cucinare, questo sì. per cucinare. Sì. That one cooks like spinach, this one for salad. It's 
often lovely to see it weighted out on the old Roman scales. A break for me, so I can paint Udine's fine Piazza San Giacomo. It's really an excuse for an espresso. Italian coffee is the best, even if it was the Turks who taught the Italians how to make it. Sclopit, queste sono tutte erbe selvatiche. Tutte vengono nei prati e nei boschi. E quanti forma? Queste sono ortiche, sa cosa sono le ortiche? Quelle che pizzicano. Grazie. We're up in the mountains of Carnia in Chef Cosetti's kitchen again. On the menu tonight is the local version of ravioli, cialzons, stuffed dumplings, a special treat. They can be sweet or salt, or a mixture of both. I dischi da dove viene messo il ripieno a little egg, so the pastry can be sealed. The stuffing is wild herbs, cooked in a little water and well drained, mashed with fresh curd cheese, seasoned with cinnamon, salt and pepper. Il ripieno si passa alla chiusura, che essendo stato bagnato con l'uovo, la pasta aderisce bene. Ecco, adesso gli diamo anche il condimento, viene fatto con un po' di formaggio di latteria grattugiato, un po' di questo omt, che sarebbe il burro chiarificato, e gli diamo anche una veste un po', una veste un po bellina, con una bella rosetta, che lo rende bello presentabile. E questi sono i chiarsons. This is pickled turnip. It's the essential ingredient in a very popular local dish. Salam dal sic cum brovade, il dato, di Roma. Poi gira un po'. Poi gli viene spruzzato questo, questo sic. Quindi il sic viene fatto, viene fatto mettendo is really very simple. Slices of salami warmed in a pan, diced with pear vinegar, finished with grated pickled turnip, the bravada. Down on the plain where there are vineyards, the turnip is pickled in the sediment left in the barrel after the wine is drawn off, so it's much darker, called vinaccia. The cotecino is a sausage made with belly pork and rind. Otherwise, the king in his castle eats just like the poor man at his gate. This is Ursula's cotecino con brovada. These are the ingredients for orzo e fagioli, barley and beans. Everything is homegrown. Borlotti beans, barley, onion, celery tops, parsley, oregano, garlic, carrots. The beans need soaking overnight first, and then they take two or three hours at a steady boil. The reward for patience is Friuli's favorite minestra, the midday meal in a pot. The people of Friuli make excellent wines from their own vineyards. Noi prendiamo praticamente tutto quello che ci dà la vita, fa parte della nostra cultura, fa parte della nostra tradizione. È la pianta di noi friulani. Questa è una vita che ormai ha finito la sua, la sua carriera di produzione di vino e ci dà il legno per fare il fuoco. Something to warm both inside and out. Non si può finire 
un pranzo alla friulana senza aver bevuto il distillato friulano, che è la grappa. Se invecchiata come questa, forse è ancora meglio, però. <ride> And those were delicious. Frittata, the flat Italian omelette. Although in Friuli it's thicker and juicier than elsewhere. Salute, bene. Salute in ladino. Salute. Salute. Sì, salute. Salute. These ladies are making a gubana. The gubana was once an Easter treat. Now in these more affluent times, it's enjoyed throughout the year, whenever there's something to celebrate. And it serves as the traditional wedding cake too. Those who enjoy the old customs give away miniature ones as parting gifts to wedding guests. All the good things imaginable go into the filling. Almonds, hazelnuts, pine nuts, walnuts, raisins, grated lemon rind, macaroons, all finely chopped and soaked with rum, masala, and of course the grappa. Teresa Giudita has expanded what was once a home cook's baking into a small industry making good use of local skills. The dough is a yeast-raised bread dough, enriched with eggs, butter and sugar. It'll need about an hour to raise and an hour to bake. There's a Turkish slate of hand to this, with a trick or two learned from Austria's skilled strudel makers. We are, after all, right by the borders of the old Ottoman Empire. Wooden carnival masks, the precursors of the carved crucifixes and Christian nativities, reflect the preoccupations of this hardy mountain people. This is the queen, and she's an ugly mug, she's got a wart. And then five personages. This is the foul mouth, the loud mouth. And this is the earthquake, very important around here because plenty of earthquakes. This is the scold, always a woman, with her mouth sewn up. This is the devil, with a long tongue. This is the medicine man, and that's, that's the five. Life in the mountain villages of Karnia is much the same as it has been for a hundred years. The scenes in this wooden creche carved by a local craftsman depict life in 1905 and they can still be found today. And even down on the plain in Buya, the old traditions are kept alive by the dancers and musicians. Thank <laughs> you. 